Uh, hey, Pete. Hi. Welcome to uh, Behind the Braves in the Alumni Lounge. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, uh, this has been a lot of fun getting getting to know guys, and obviously, you're just kind of wrapping up your career. We'll kind of, and we'll get into that a little bit. Okay. You're still dabbling, but um, uh, you are um, just having a good time right now kind of finishing up starting you got a lot of stuff happening right now tell us what's going on in your world well i came back from europe i was in europe for a few months as you know um i i had event, i had made the plan to to play this year uh, that was my goal and unfortunately wasn't able to get a job in the time that i was willing to allow myself to get a job so uh i started to look at other options and one of the options was europe and i decided to go over there and spent three months over there pitching starting throwing 100 pitches a week and then traveling the rest of the time so it was it was pretty cool i saw a few pictures of you in the czech republic so you're on one of the streets it looks like cobblestone streets or yeah. something sign an autograph so yeah were you like a rock star over there or? well the problem was the first the first uh the first day that i was there they released a newspaper article talking about how much money i earned <laughs> in my career <laughs> and if you know anything Great. about if you know anything about czech republic they don't make a lot of money over there so mm. for that number was thrown out straight away so oh. uh, and plus mm. the tattoos so that doesn't really give me a lot of a lot of uh breathing room when it comes to being able to hide yeah um but so rock star no but i was very recognizable mm -hmm. yeah yeah well you weren't uh glasses are fogging up look at this <laughs> <laughs> well traffic will do that to you i know oh, no kidding right yeah, yeah, yeah. sprinting in here oh my God. atlanta traffic kills me go ahead at least we had uh we didn't have the 95 degrees today in the in i know the coming in that's what i understand why i'm sweating well at least they couldn't say crazy american is coming to check right because right you're from australia now pronounce the town that you're from um it depends on which one you want to say it's it's been wrong in so many media guides les murdy les murdy is where les i oh. how, would a, how would a hillbilly say that guy from tennessee leave it to the guy from tennessee <laughs> to nail it i would have i would have butchered, butchered it so yeah. les murdy was one of those places where um it's i, I kind of grew i that's where i was during my high school years i didn't grow up there i grew up in perth in adderdale um but les murdy is where they put on uh, all the all the media guides and uh they also they also get a lot a lot of the information i was 175 pounds when i came over here the second time <laughs> which was the weight that i checked in at in rookie ball <laughs> so yeah. there you go so i'm looking at it i'm going 175 pounds i don't think i've been like, so, what is that gap and i was doing? only six foot apparently when i came back over here the second time yeah. so <laughs> i shrunk three inches and, and i lost about 50 pounds when i came over here the second time um but you know the the media guide is one of those things that uh which we don't have anymore kind of like wikipedia i guess you can just yeah. edit it as much as you want That's so right. uh, there's still even as of last year, I, I don't want to name names, but uh, we were in the press box one day, and there was a guy. He was a, he was a pitcher, and we were looking at his his listed weight, and it, it was at least fifty off. If, if that yeah. might be being generous, you can yeah. say who we're talking about. No, 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 I can't. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I don't want. Okay. I don't want to call anybody out. Uh, but yeah, I think that's still media guides or no media guides. Those, those well, rookie ball weights are still what they list and heights. I, think. I will say this: I, I played with Rafael Belliard, which helped us win the World Series. He was our defensive replacement great defensive player and he was always he looked like he could have been my um my older uncle but uh he was always listed as like the same age as me and i asked him after he retired i said i said rafi really how old are you and he goes and he goes well add three or four to whatever's in the media really he admitted it <laughs> no kidding he admitted really? that that's wow. crazy yeah that was commonplace though back in the day oh yeah 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 sure yeah i mean I, and I don't blame them. No, I, mean, I can't blame them. Coming over from from the island, and you're trying to trying to make a living, and and they ask you how old you are, and it always is better to be younger than older. Then I, I don't I don't blame them. But so Perth is on the other side of. I've been to Melbourne. I've been to Sydney. I went there for one winter after baseball season and saw the Australian Open, which is gorgeous. And of course, my daughter lives in New Zealand. Wow. So uh, that's you're a long ways away from the big city. Right. Um, Perth over there is on the Perth's, other side. Now, Perth's right? on the west coast, but look, I, I, Perth's like a small retirement place. It's massive. It's the biggest. Western Australia is the biggest state in Australia as far as landmass goes, but it's got the least amount of population. Right. So they're on the other side of the country. Um, Perth, where I grew up, is is this little country town where everybody's happy, everybody's in a great mood. <laughs> the traffic's everything's 20 minutes away. It doesn't matter how far you go and where you go, it's 20 minutes away. Um, and then I made the decision after I got released my first time to to move to Melbourne. So, uh, and Melbourne is is like a 
it's a happy medium between Perth and Sydney, mm-hmm. I like to call it, because you've got, you can get in as much action as you want to get into, but you can also, you can hide away a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, it's like living out in Canton. It's, uh, you can, <laughs> you can come down and get amongst right. the, you can get amongst That's the trouble right. if you want to, but, uh, yeah, you can. I haven't heard that analogy. Uh, it's a good one. I like Melbourne it. and Canton, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Food's a bit different in Canton. But, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love Perth and, and it's one of those cities where I feel like I could probably retire there. Um, but I'm a long way off that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How so, often are you able to go back over there? At least once a year, I try and get back there. Um, my 12 year old still lives over there. Uh, I've got three daughters now. My oldest one is actually an au pair in New York. Um, so nice. she's over here on, on this side of the country. My middle daughter, she's still living with, with my ex-wife in Australia. Um, and so I, have to, I go back every every year to catch up with her. And, and she comes over here a couple of times as well. So, And then obviously my younger daughter lives with us. Nice. Mm. Yeah, and you've got... So how old's your, your youngest here? She's five. five she just started right. school. Wow, you're starting over. Man, I'm telling you, this... and. Um, I don't know what it is, but she's she's she went to school for a month and now she's reading. Like it's, <laughs> it kind of makes you think, well, what was I doing wrong for the first four and a half years that now she's gone to school for one month and she's already just outdone yeah. everything that that I tried to teach her in the first four and a half years. Yeah, yeah they really try to crank them out here and mm. get them get them going fast. Math. Yeah. I mean, they've got schools for you know extra schools and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of it's it's a, it's I've noticed that there's a bit of excess in this country or maybe the state but i just discovered the other day that there is under seven travel ball baseball teams that are nationally ranked Mm. under seven (laughs) six-year-olds how do you nationally rank a six-year-old baseball team can you explain that to me? Best uniforms, uh, parents calling and cash, should you? just <laughs> yeah. throwing cash at these guys. That's right. Like, yeah, well, That's it's, right. it's amazing. I want my kid ranked, so you better get him done. He's not going to get a college scholarship if he's not ranked as a six-year-old. I mean, what is that? Oh, I had the craziest experience. I had a training facility for a while, and I got the phone call one day, and uh, the, the uh, assistant said, "Hey, Greg, uh, this lady wants to talk to you about an all-year-round program for her son." And I go, "Okay, yeah." Which you know wasn't you can't have have a train facility unless it's open all year round so i'm thinking okay well maybe we'll do a little of this and you know we'll divide all up well so she starts telling me about hey i'm getting ready to i, I would i would like to send my son to the img academy down in florida and and do an all-year program but i really don't i'm not crazy about sending him off to, to live with somebody else so can you put together a program for me and i go yeah i don't say that you know it's probably not a problem at all i said but let me ask you one question how old's your son she goes well he's six Oh, and I goodness. said, lady, you need to chill out. I said, uh, you don't need to do anything with your six-year-old son. <laughs> and I hung up. I am just where pro, where pro guys go. This was 10 years ago. This is where pro guys go to get their off-season workout programs in. And yeah. she's sending a six-year-old there. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, they got, you know, IMG's crazy with, they got their own high school football team and, I mean, baseball team. I know the guy that runs the baseball side. But, yeah, it, I think that is the downside of what we're seeing and it's been coming for a while. And I think it's what happened to you and what happened to Medlin and, and Beachy and a lot of guys that we're seeing from the Tommy John perspective. Mm. I think a lot of that has started, and maybe not your case, but a lot of that started with these guys when they're 10, 11, 12 years old. And they're asking them to specialize and be pitching and, and doing a lot of stuff. Right. And, 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 it, and the effort level and that and all the the showcases and all that kind of stuff start, is starting so young and we keep wondering why the health of our kids why they can't pitch you know without tommy john past high school right. whereas when i was playing if one guy on your team had tommy john that was a lot right and now it's probably at least three four five guys if you haven't had tommy john yeah you're you're yeah. in that's the minority right. like that's right that's yeah it's i mean for me it was. I think the problem with me is that I, I, it was just such a big shock to the system for me. I went from from playing beer league baseball to mm. all of a sudden I'm playing every single day. I'm playing catch every day. I'm pitching every other day. So my arm wasn't used to it, and you know I wasn't. Um, I guess I didn't. I didn't really take care of myself a little bit. I didn't take care of myself well enough in that off season leading up to my first time mm. John. Um, so that's my fault, and I take full responsibility for that. Well, that's These certainly days. that's that's a rarity. I mean, usually right. that doesn't happen in the states. You grew up probably with soccer and cricket and all right. these other things, where that's not the case here. Right. It's the other extreme. Right. Yeah. Well, um, the second one, again, I take full responsibility because I was fat. I went into spring training with Astros and I was fat, <laughs> and I hurt my foot leading up to it, and I was putting extra weight and too much weight on my landing foot, and it caused me to change my mechanics, mm-hmm. and my mechanics went 
and my I've got a photo on my phone where I've got side by side from the year before mm. with and then that year in spring training and my arm angle was about eight inches higher and I changed everything I changed everything about my mm. mechanics and I was a week away from making the team mm. and then I blew out so yeah that was another isn't that crazy how as a as a pitcher you you thrive on a routine you know and, and it's just your body gets acclimated for doing something and then all of a sudden you change it just a little bit uh, I've seen uh, I've heard stories and seen guys who've been hurt mm. you know where they pull a hamstring or I even know one guy Pete Smith who played with us know, got Pete. hit yeah you know he got hit in the head and he kept pitching and after that, he t- his rotator cuff tore. He never knew how he did it, and it was something happened after he got hit in that same game that tore his rotator cuff when he kept pitching because he altered something. It was really weird, but it's amazing. Like you said, you your arm angle changed, and all of a sudden your body is not used to that, right. and then and then you tear something, you know. And that's that. I've heard that story over and over again. Yeah. I know I did that where I changed something in the off season, thinking I was going to be try to make myself a little bit better next thing you know I end up with tendonitis and that ends up tearing my you know I get a rotator cuff tear so right. it it it's just interesting how that how that happens you know pit there's such a fine line between too much too little right. changing stuff being in the right arm slot there's, um, there's so much video now too that you, you can sort of it wouldn't last longer than a couple of outings for guys now I don't think because mm-hmm. they can see it and they can look at it and go well, well, well I felt different you know let's right. go look at it yeah they can break it down with all kinds of different camera, camera mm-hmm. angles now so I don't think anyone feeling out of whack would last longer than, than a couple of days now but well I call, I talked to Perry um, Azian the other day this was probably well, it was probably about a month ago and I saw him downstairs in the Delta Club and I just said hey um, I noticed something about uh, Mike Soroka mm. I said he is given he's tipping one of his pitches I said I noticed that he's really Really move, you know, him and Fulty, they try to really move their gloves right. to, to hide pitch. And I guess I guess instead of doing it once every four times, if they think they do it every time, then it won't, you know, whatever you need to do, you need to be consistent, right? Mm-hmm. So I noticed on the changeup, he wasn't wiggling, but then to hide the the – the, the glove he would try to trick him and then with the fastball he would wiggle right right, right. so it was to, but as you know when you get in the game sometimes you don't realize that and i said i just wanted to let you know 10 people may have told you this but i just want to let you know i saw something last night while he was pitching and he and he was giving away his change up on uh, at least six times that i saw that mm-hmm. i counted and he goes he goes yeah he's been he's been known to do that we actually have somebody that goes with him over goes over with him every pitch after the game just to, to see to break down all those things wow. because he's had a tendency to do that yeah. he said but thanks for letting me know but but we do have a guy that goes over that with him it's crazy how paranoid you can get to because <laughs> i i every single time i'm on the mound i think i'm tipping pitches especially mm-hmm. if you give up a hard hit ball that shouldn't have been hit you're like oh he must have known something there's no way to right. hit that like i, I, I must be tipping. up on the scoreboard yeah, yeah. I'm a, i must be tipping my, my stuff's way too good to get hit that hard <laughs> um but yeah it's and i would go back and watch video too mm-hmm. but there's people like chase utley who used to do it chase utley would sit on the other side in the bench and just watch the pitches especially when he was with the Dodgers and he wasn't playing as much that's what his job was he'd sit there and he'd watch it TP was really good at it too <clears throat> these guys that that can just pick up the, the most minuscule minute things and you, you, you there's no way you can feel it but if, if, but they can see it mm-hmm. it's crazy yeah how do you uh, how do you keep your sanity then if that's the case I mean how do you keep going out there how do you block all that out I mean that that seems like it would it seems like it would drive me nuts so how, how do you how do you deal with that well, um, for me I was just hopefully you got in a, you got in a run and you started to forget about it um, pitching's all about confidence and if you get a few good outings in a row it doesn't matter who's in the box for me. <laughs> right. How was – so the you had the experience in the Czech Republic this summer. Is that something you think you'll do again next no. summer? Or that that was it? That was Just, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to get myself ready for the Olympics. Okay. Um, the Olympics is next year. We've got the uh, Olympic qualifying tournaments in October. So, yeah. Um, How's it looking? It's going to be so hard. There's only six teams and Japan's already in. So there's only five spots left. Um, Will the but, U.S. take pro guys? They still doing that? I think they're allowed to take AAA guys. Oh, AAA. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no one on f- any 40-man rosters, I don't think, because um, it's supposed to be amateur. Which right. I don't understand how the NBA guys can go and play, but the MLB <laughs> guys can't. Like, yeah. Well, that's AAA always... guys aren't amateur. Right, but but there's surely, surely the NBA guys would have been able to just pick a pool of college guys. And or... the Japanese guys, I'm sure they're getting guys out of the Japanese no. league. No? No. Do they even have a minor league system? Yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right. 
So uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with you uh, right now from a broadcasting standpoint. Okay. So I saw your schedule. You've got a lot of work that you're doing with do. box pregame and postgame. Is that something you've always wanted to do or no, it just kind of came not. up? <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, it's, it was something that, that I thought about, but I didn't think it was going to come this quickly. And they sort of approached me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing it? And I was. So uh, first couple of games were, were, were fun. And then you sort of get into the rhythm of it. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, um, but it's live live so there's no cough buttons there's no nothing um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's loud out there huh it's loud uh, <laughs> the, I, my first and the sound guys are probably going to crush me for this but my first uh, my first ever sitting down with the live camera on I lost all sound in my ears and I was talking to Tom and Chip and they were asking me questions and, and I couldn't hear a word they were saying. Oh, no. So I'm just kind of smiling at the camera and, just, and just, I look like a complete nuffy, not answering any questions at all. Um, so that was interesting. Pete, um, we can't do sign language, you can't see Right, us. exactly. Uh, what is the biggest thing you've learned so far in, in the broadcasting side of, uh, of the business? What's been the biggest shock, I guess? Um, it's the ability of people that have been doing it for so long to effectively say the same thing over and over again in different ways. So um, that's the hardest thing for me is that, is that you know, when, you, when I get asked a question in the clubhouse, I can answer it just, mm. and I've got 45 seconds to answer it. I don't have to get back and ask the same question the next day or the day after that or the day after that. You know, it, it changes. Whereas in broadcasting, you're often going over the same things and trying to find different ways to say it. And that's been the hardest adjustment for me so far. Make it seem fresh. Right. When, I mean, especially a team that's, when you think about every day, you got, you're following the guys and you're you're trying you might be and you try to stay positive as well you know yeah. it's not you can't you you I try and stay positive and fair if that yeah have you felt sense. have you felt the tension there no um at all? I know I know I'm talked to BJ and those guys about it and it's it's tough sometimes it is tough to stay positive sometimes but um you know I was in that clubhouse last year so I, I can give a, a personal account or personal stories and I'm trying to I'm trying to give opinions that they can't look up on the internet. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest thing. Yeah, that's well. You definitely have a fresh perspective of just being in there, knowing right. some of those personalities, and um, you know that's what people want to know. I mean, right. they they don't. You know, anybody can talk stats. Anybody can talk about you know and project what they think is going to happen to this team. Right. And, but uh, got to be careful too. You got to be careful with. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to throw anyone under the bus, especially when it comes to to this this end of the the season where they're talking about playoff rosters and who's going to make it, who's not going to make it, and <clears throat> it's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to, you know, you can have your opinion, but you don't want to you don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Right. So, so is this kind of a trial run for you right now? With I think so. Just, just I know you've had you'll end up doing what 20, 25? 25 games, and then I get to a couple of playoff games too. Okay. So see how you like it, and then I like it. I like it. So okay. um, I don't want to give too much away, but I'd like to come back next year. Okay, that's for sure. Well, yeah. good. Well, um, I'm, if I'm it doesn't sure. get in the way of the Olympics, obviously. Right. right. Yeah, and you'll know that pretty quickly here in the first few months of the season. I will know that if we don't qualify in the Premier Twelves in November, um, I think there's another chance to qualify in February next year. But the Olympics are in July or August, so. Um, I don't know that we'll have a lot of lead-up stuff, so it might just be two weeks where I have to go to Japan and compete. But that's a lot of long time to stay in shape and keep throwing. And well, I mean, be look sharp. at me. I'm, a, I'm a specimen. Yeah, but we don't want to hurt that arm again, right? <laughs> well, why not? I got, I got, I'm, not, I'm not saving it for anything Because you don't want to go. You don't want to go through all that again. <laughs> right. But I'm not. I'm not saving. That's what I said to. Uh, I said to the pitching coach the other day. I said I've got nothing to to save myself for now so it's not a lot of the times in the WBC you know I have in, innings restrictions or if I go home and pitch in Australia I'm so oh, I can only throw every other day mm -hmm. I don't want to throw every day but now it's like you know what if it goes it goes it's already been well, well let me just say this as an older you right so right. I'm 52 you don't want to have to you're going to deal with the effects of whatever happened to you right now for years to come and you don't want to have to deal with it because you're going to have a golf game at some point, and you don't want to have to deal with something that happens right now. Think it may not matter to you right now, but it will 20 years from now. Listen, <laughs> Let's put it that when way. I when I rehab my elbow the first time, golf was good for it. Apparently, so. Oh yeah, uh, there you yeah. Go. yeah. When I think about your career, for you guys, if you're able to make it to the the Olympics, the 
the career? I mean, I know you were with the Twins first and then went back to, back home and then ended up coming back here in the WBC. But really, I think, at least with Braves fans, we all came to know you first uh, in 2006 when you're mm-hmm. pitching for Australia and, and the Braves ended up signing you. Uh, what a great way that would be to bookend a career to start really start got to really when mm-hmm. it got started at the the 2006 World Baseball Classic yeah. and to end it with the Olympics. I just got to think that's yeah, got to be, be awesome. that's well, a, that was, kind of a dream. That was the end goal. Um, once I saw that Olympics was going to be back, uh, or baseball was going to be back in the Olympics, um, I set that as a goal. As I said, I wanted to play this year, which would have made it a lot easier to stay in shape. But um, I found a way to to stay in shape despite not playing and, and I've also found a way to hang around the Braves this year which has been cool especially with the amount of success they're having mm-hmm. um, piggybacking from last year mm-hmm. where I felt like I contributed very little on the field but you know tried to try to keep the guys locked in inside the clubhouse um, but yeah last year was frustrating holy cow last mm-hmm. year was frustrating for me personally but We'll go into that on another podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, There's no God. no easy way to end a career. I mean, no, you know, it's just. But the frustrating thing was, like I was, like the two years before, I had pretty good years, and I was really excited to come back here and continue. And then it just nothing, just nothing fell into place last year. Yeah. It was just strange, weird. Yeah. Mm. Well, one highlight from last year. I work at most home games in the in the press box and. So I see the anthem every day, and the one of the, the one of the ones that stuck out last year was when you were with the team and your wife sang the uh, ah, national yes. anthem, and yeah. I thought that was just so cool with the shot of you being on the field and your wife singing the national anthem. That has to be – she's got a heck of a voice. She, she does. She's done that a few times. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she but, loves it. Yeah. That she was, loves seeing her doing it. Is she a professional singer? She or? was, yeah, before I dragged her away. and Wow. <laughs> Gave her a beautiful life and uh, <laughs> took all the pressure off. No, she was gonna she was gonna uh, be a recording artist, but it just didn't end up being what she expected it to yeah. be. Where did you guys meet? Uh, she was actually singing. Um, she was singing at Wild Bills up in Duluth. Yeah, and uh, I went in there, and, and uh, there's a VIP room in there, and a lot of the artists go in there and sing, and and uh, yeah, I went in there and. She was there, and she heard me talk, and it was all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it took, huh? That's all it took. Just said a couple of words, and next thing you know, it was over. All right. Yeah. So she must have been – she had aspirations of being a country singer? No. <laughs> oh, really? That's okay. funny. Um, so she sings a lot of, like, Christina Aguilera and Adele and that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, but when – this is part of the reason why she stopped is that when she was recording, they said, well, in order for you to record, you have to sing country because you're too old to sing anything else. Mm. She was 25 at the time, or 26, I think. Goodness gracious. So, yeah, so she had to lie about everything, tell them that country's been the only thing she's listened to for her whole life, and it's just a bunch of trollop, really. Six-year-old yeah. baseball players are ranked. She's 26 <laughs> is too old to sing. Right. What is happening? No. It's crazy. The, the world's falling stop, apart. Guys. Stop this. Cats and dogs yeah. living together. <laughs> yeah. This is just our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> no, right? It's just nuts. Uh, oh, that's funny. Well, I remember years ago there was some talk of because your story is so remarkable, and most Braves fans, I think, know it by now of how you ended up with the Braves in the first place. But there was talk of a of a movie about your life or your journey from uh, from, from Australia to end up to where it ended up with mm-hmm. the Braves. Is that ever something that still gets talked? about or, or was, you should you got to write a book at some point right it's gonna be i think a book's gonna come out yeah but um the 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 movie's always been on hold depending on how it was going to end we don't we didn't know the ending so um excuse me the uh the olympics would be a cool ending mm-hmm. uh and if that doesn't that if that doesn't happen then i guess it'll have to be some sort of uh media ending but um the story leading up to how i got over here has to be told and mm. um you know i get asked in interviews all the time to to retell the story and it takes forever but i <laughs> i do love i do love telling it because it's such a mm. cool story um and i know everyone who's probably watching this has already heard it so i'm not going to go through it but um yeah it's 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 cool to tell and it's cool to see people's reaction but going through it back in the day was just mm. insane it was insane well, as your alumni director, we'll have to put together um, kind of like a, a speaking program Tour. together. 
Yeah. Well, just, just you know, pe- <laughs> people are always asking me, you know, who do you have from a motivational standpoint? And mm. so we need to capture a little snippet snippet of your story so that I can share that with them. And they may want you, and then we can work on how do we get that into, you know, a concise 20 to 25-minute motivational talk or just your story because companies want to hear that. You cool. Know, people, so we'll that's something we can I'm talk in. about in the future. As long as we can incorporate some sort of, like, phone book ripping and... <laughs> <laughs> and oh yeah, bending steel over my head too. <laughs> we can do that too. Well, yeah. Who who's gonna play Peter Moylan in the in the the Peter Moylan movie? Who would or who would your choice be? Let me put it that way. Um, Russell Crowe maybe the Russell Crowe could play this version. <laughs> <laughs> this, there you this, go. Uh, I don't know about the early version. Um, I'd probably play myself. There you go. What do you think? I think I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Some people uh, used to say, "Where's Wally?" Like I used, to, I look like the the character out of "Where's Wally." <laughs> okay. Um, it's funny you say that because here it's it? Waldo. Waldo. Okay. And and yeah. but my son-in-law said the same thing down in New Zealand. It's Wally. Yeah. Everywhere else in the world, it's Wally. Here it's Waldo, and it's like, um, in like the game Clue is Cluedo. Well, you know, where, where did that come from? I don't know. Well, you know, <laughs> did you hear that? You never yeah. played the game Clue growing up? Clue. Or was it Clue. called Cluedo? Clue. Cluedo. Cluedo. See, yeah, but it's, it's Clue the, here. It's the one where you got to find out who did the. Yeah, who yeah, done yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, where did Cluedo, Cluedo come from? I, give me a Cluedo. Or give me a clue. All right. Well, you know how you played baseball with Jack White with Billy Reed a couple yeah. of weeks ago, and his, he was there with his band, the Rackin' Tours. Yeah. In Australia, they are known as the Saboteurs because oh. there was already an Australian band that has the, I guess, the copyright or the trademark to oh, that name okay. over there. So when they tour Australia, they're the Saboteurs. So okay. There's just another another tidbit for you. Oh. You guys have you guys changed movie names too? <clears throat> There's been certain movies that are, uh, you know, that one suddenly thirty. Oh, or uh, thirty going on thirty, or three going, eighteen 30 going, on, going on thirteen, or whatever it is. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah the it's names change from okay. and in UK as well. Interesting. So huh. I don't know if it's just it's a, to fit your market or whether it's mm-hmm. to fit the other market. I don't, Interesting. I'm not sure. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, well one, we're one, so worldly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> we're we're learning a lot. We're on the yeah, nose. That's right. Yeah. So I know it's been pretty. It's been pretty early because you just retired. You just retired, but. But if you look back over your career, I don't know if you've had time to kind of um, ponder this or meditate on it a little bit, but is there anything that you've learned that you feel like that um, is your big takeaway from from your career, from pitching, being over here in the States, that's going to kind of propel your next part of your career? Or, um, you know, usually I encourage guys to take a year off, right. you know, and, and just to kind of let things settle down. And But, you know, you've jumped right into – of course, you're kind of – you're extending your career because you're talking about the Olympics. But, right. you know, now this broadcast thing could – I mean, you could immediately go right into that. Yeah. And there won't be any break for you. The biggest thing that I've learned is is – not to take anything for granted because <coughs> excuse me um as you know you know my career has kind of been a career of two halves and the first four and a half years were so easy i guess everything just sort of fell into place and then to go from that to what essentially was a grind from 2011 to last year injuries and and you know um coming back and and it's amazing to see the mindset of of teams change or their opinion of you change Mm -hmm. in 2011 and 12 i could have got a minor league job anywhere and then in 13 14 it it, you know drops down to three or four teams and it's like what happened you know i haven't changed that much for a pitcher but you know it's just you've got to you've got to really want it and you've got to do whatever it takes to to go and get it and I've learned that through two Tommy Johns and two shoulders and, and a back surgery it's just just over here so um, it's also it also helps that I was still getting an offer at least one offer a year so someone was willing to pay me to to, to play so um, but well, yeah, you that's... experienced a cultural shift in the game of pitching. Oh. So whereas there, there was a premium on sinker ballers, mm-hmm. uh, so you become older, and you become uh, the opposite end of the trend. Right, the trend's going towards high rate, you know, high spin rate, mm-hmm. uh, four seam fastballs up in the zone. Right, you're down here, so you you kind of were a victim of that cultural shift. And it's gone back the other way too now. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it um, will. I mean, you look at Eflin's start the other day. He he worked 
he worked down the zone, whereas for the whole year they've been trying to get him to, to you know, elevate and, and dominate, whatever they call it. But <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, the launch angle thing, I get it. You know, um, the home run things, I get it. The ball's changing, I get it. But I don't understand how being effective down in the zone has changed. I mean, if you're down and they're trying to swing up, isn't that mm-hmm. what you're trying to do? I'm not, yeah. I'm not a pitching guru, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked about it a bunch on the show. It really comes down to, because analytics have become so prominent, they basically said, if you look at the if you look at the zone, which is like this now, this part right here, batting averages are 172. Mm-hmm. So just pitch there. Yeah, but well, if, the problem but is this is a ball here. and this is a home run. Right, exactly. <laughs> Whereas we know that over the last 100-plus years of baseball, this has always been an out. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden they said, well, let's try this because there would be a lot of success because we don't have to worry about defense if they're popping the ball up right. or if they're swinging and missing. So I think that – I think, like you, like you said, I truly believe that – our two best pitchers are guys that pitch down here, right? And that's Soroka and that's Keuchel. So, and if you look at what Freed and and what you know Fultonevich are trying to make the ball move and go down now because they've seen the success of the other guys, and then Eflin and guys like that, and uh, even Nola, you know, Nola got got the ball up, he got hurt. He stayed down, he dominated. He got I think, Acuna'd. That's right. <laughs> well, we know that the formula for success in Major League Baseball over the last hundred plus years has been location and movement. Mm-hmm. That's never going to change. But there was a little cultural shift, and I think it's going to swing back because what guys have found is that's very difficult to do on a consistent basis. Especially with a sinker. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's right. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. Well, last, thank you again for your time, Pete. Uh, Just last question for me. Um, Looking back on this incredible career you've had, is there one game or one moment that stands out to you above the the rest that you're just like, that was was the day? If I had to pick one moment, that was it. Yeah, and and it didn't have anything to do with me. It was when Hinsky hit that home run off Romo in the 2010 playoffs Mm -hmm. and Turner Field was as loud as I've ever heard it Um, and just the emotion that was my first playoff experience so uh, I had never felt anything like that before and the the emotion of his run run around the base with his with his fist up in the air, you know, this is a place where you'd sort of had to act like you'd done it before. Mm-hmm. So that emotion, you could show it, but it was you know kind of like okay, yeah, you had your five seconds of emotion. Now move on and let's. <laughs> but yeah, to see, to be a part of that was. Mm. Unbelievable. That's cool. As you were saying that, I was just picturing him running around in front yeah. with that mm-hmm. fist up in the air. Yeah. That's one of those. And I mean, it was a wall scraper too, but it doesn't matter. And it was. Yeah. A, I think we're down. We're down one nothing with a run on first or a yeah. run on second, and pinch hit home run by Hinsky. It was huge. Yeah, it was. That is awesome. That was actually my first year here um, working with the alumni, so oh. I remember that well. And. Uh, it was kind of cool. I, I do have one final question for you, and as it relates to the team nowadays, uh, or the team right now, that do you see that this team has what it takes uh, to go all the way, or do you think we're still a piece or two away? The beauty of this game right now is that any team can beat anyone right now. You look at the Orioles, they've somehow managed to get 40-something wins this year, and they're a triple-A team. So um, I think if, if everything lines up, um, it's going to be tough to compete against the American League's teams, but I think we're a chance to get to the World Series. Um, I think we'll, I think we'll beat the Dodgers this year. Mm. Um, I think their time is about up. Um, their starting pitching isn't as good as it once was. Um, Hill's gone back on the injured list, I think. Uh, Walker Bueller's, I think, probably the number one. Kershaw is going to be Kershaw, but he's not the Kershaw that he was two, mm. three years ago. And um, Ryu has been back. And Ryu's injuries. been yeah, exactly. You so never know if he's going to be there or not. But that lineup is good, but it's also pitchable, I think, too. Um, now you look at the Astros, who I think are the favourites in the AL. They're going to be tough. Mm-hmm. Verlander, Cole, Greinke, mm-hmm. one, two, three, <laughs> uh, and then that three lineup. Ones. You got that lineup too. <clears throat> yeah. um, there's no holes. One through nine. Tough place what? to play too. We may get the advantage because I don't get to hit much, but, I mean, still. Yeah. 
That's a that's a tough score. Regardless of how it goes, I'm still replaying the Hinsky moment in my head, and I'm like, it's just it's that time as we're sitting here, as we're sitting here recording this today, the Braves could clinch tonight, and I'm like, so that means the postseason is almost here, and yeah. it's, I'm already thinking of what are those moments going to be this year, and that's kind of what it's all Kuna's about. Grand Kuna, slam Kuna's last Grand Slam last year was just to yeah. be in the building for that was, I mean, the place was just shaking, and that's mm-hmm. what that's what it's all about. So I'm just, however it all turns out, uh, there's going to be yeah. some moments like that, and I'm fired up for yeah. it. Yeah. So well. tonight you could uh, be on the post game show. I could be here for a very long time. Very long time. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'll get to go down? Will you stay out on the stage or will you go? You won't go down the locker no, room no. at all? Okay. Raincoat. I'll have to wear a raincoat if I do. <laughs> Send no. Kelsey down there, right? <laughs> uh, I think it's gonna, I, could, uh, Jeff, I think Jeff's going down there. Frenchie. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Good. Very nice. Perfect. The guys will yeah. love to stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's Perfect. right. <laughs> oh, that'll be, that'll be awesome. Some Frenchie blues. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, Very good. Go. Good. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Anytime. Hopefully I can stop sweating now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring a fan in. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing on you the whole time. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. No, anytime, guys. <laughs>